Hi there, my name is Paul Kroon and I'm a power management specialist at Macau in the Netherlands. And in this video, we're going to talk about refreshing galleries when multiple people using your application. And this idea is a result of a video Shane uh, shared this uh, yesterday about not using the refresh function. And when you use the refresh function, the thing is you basically say to the data source, refresh yourself and return all the records to me. To the maximum I want to hold. So basically when you have more than 2000 records and you set the number of records to 2000 in your application, you always return the two first 2000 records, which is not what you want because it's what are going to kill your performance. So what we want is to refresh the data source only uh, based on the gallery. So we want the gallery to say, okay, we want to refresh and then get the information the gallery needs with all the filters applied from that application. So I thought about how we can do this when we have multiple people uses the record because we can say the gallery refresh yourself gallery. We don't have a uh, function for that. <coughs> so I came up with a solution and I thought let's share it and uh, thanks to Shane Young for this video which made me think about it. So what I did, I have a de demo app and I basically start this demo up two times. So we have two the same uh, demo apps and because these are different sessions, this is basically simulating different people using the same app on different devices. And then when we say to the one instance, say, okay, let's add an item and then a notes and then say number one, it's uh, yes, no, so it's yes. So it's visible and I have a filter to only show the yeses here and uh, then we have item one if we go to the other session and we wait a little bit we see the item is coming into here and item two let's uh, say okay we have notes here and we have two <coughs> and uh, we added an item let's say the second one we want to disable and save this so this reflect those exchanges one item edit sending to archive and if we go here and we wait a minute you see item 2 is here and the second item is not visible anymore so basically this is keeping in sync and refreshing so what I, did I do here so let's show you my setup I always use a like, like a container uh, to put in some trigger which I can trigger centralized and here I edit a timer this timer is running 10 seconds and after 10 seconds it changes a variable which you can reflect see reflected here from false to true all the time so basically a toggle saying update this variable to the opposite of the same variable which makes it true false true false every 10 seconds and you see this reflection here so if we have a new item item three and we say notes and we have three save this we go to our other application showing the same thing uh, after 10 seconds this variable has changed and you see this item reflecting now to be honest I looked at inspect and I looked at the network tab which is basically doing a little bit the same as uh, fiddle uh, showing you all the calls only for and of course fiddles will give you some more information but for our purposes this is uh, great you see after 10 seconds this is changing and there is a uh, change which takes almost no time in our developer tools let's go to the time here in in matters of milliseconds uh, this is performed and sometimes not all the times this will invoke a pop and i think this is about time you know when something changes in a period of time and it doesn't change enough from what we have on this moment it will not invoke uh, a, a retrieve of our data source so i think when you set this to two minutes i didn't test it but when you set it to two minutes probably the time is enough between those two changes with your filter and then it applies those uh, retrieval of uh, your items from the 
data source every time. I don't know, you have to test it. But if that's not the case, then when you want to invoke those changes every 10 minutes, just put your timer on two minutes and about every six to eight minutes, it will press your data source here. So, <coughs> so th this is what I did. I just have a timer, setting a variable, changing all the time. Now let's go to Power Apps and show you what I did here. So I have my timer, which starts automatically when we come to the screen or when we go in preview mode, you see this is starting and every 10 seconds this is changing a variable with update context just a local to the scope to the screen variable which is updated from false to true and you see the items we just put in the data source are reflected now also in our designer because i didn't update it yet so then on my data table i have my to be data i have a filter and in my filter i just add uh, an or function checking my variable and it will check on two conditions one if the variable is true and the other one if the variable is opposite to false so in every case this always returns true but because this changes and this formula should be evaluated this whole filter formula is evaluated and Basically, every line in this filter variable is a part of your data query, which is sent to the data source. So basically what happens, this change, this filter formula will go to the session, will be updated. This query string with all your condition is rebuilt. And in the back end, there will be a fetch to this dummy data SharePoint list. And the, the, the items are retrieved, which basically matching the criteria as you want uh, the information to have. So that's what happened on the backend. This changes basically changing everything, refetching the data from the data source with this change without using refetch. So I thought of this because of a video of Shen Yong. Very good videos, very nice, very nice to see that you really have a deep dive in technical things. Uh, what happens when you use different formulas always makes me think, okay, there is a problem which a lot of people uh, said here in the, in the comments. Okay, how can we handle these problems? Or how can we do more with the things Shane shows us? Okay, I think this concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Hope it was beneficial to you and hope to see you in the next video.